No doubt, though, who the vast majority of the crowd here will be behind. How much of a factor will that play? We'll see how it unfolds. It'll be Andy Murray to get this one going. taste of what he could be in store for this evening. Well, it's inevitable, isn't it? As we see his uh, mum, Judy, there, Jamie Delgado, just in front, of course, his current coach. That little to the left, the ever-present team that have uh, been around him have uh, continued with their support during the uh, long rehab process. Well, you're absolutely right. I mean, there'll be plenty more of that to come from Batista Agu. The intangible is how Bautista or good deals with this situation as well, isn't it? Something we haven't really touched on. There's the Davis Cup captain on the right, Nigel Sears on the left, his uh, father-in-law. How do you think he'll deal with it, the Spaniard? Yeah, I think that's two questions, really. The, the intangible of the environment. Um, didn't handle it too well against Cam Norrie when he was a couple of sets up in Davis Cup. It mm -hmm. kind of got the best of him. Um, and obviously how well Andy can do that. If he can keep the points short through great serving, uh, that's 50% of the match taken care of. One shot in Doha that was excelling. His forehand was right on it. And it's a very flat hit, isn't it, as well? Mm. Both I mean, sides are, right? Yep. I mean, both sides, but the forehand in particular just gets through the court. And as we've been seeing at this Australian Army, it's playing pretty quick. This is a completely different set of circumstances than a match that stands alone, but it's also worth remembering he's never beaten Murray. Yep. Played on three occasions. Never even got a set for what it's worth. Jay Murray. And it's Murray. And it's up and running. And the fist pump is out early. Here's our win predictor. And uh, perhaps unsurprisingly, Bautista are good at 73%. I guess the, perhaps uh, you could suggest he might be worth a little more than that. But uh, a quarter of uh, those suggesting that Andy's going to win this one. Yeah, and I think that uh, indications that in the opening game, there's a long way to go, uh, are pretty good from Andy's perspective, especially the fist pump. You know, he's come here to compete. He's come here to try and make himself as troublesome as he can for Batista Ragu. And I think that the more he can stay level at least or even sneak an early break here, if there are a lot of nerves for the Spaniard, the more the crowd's going to get in it and lift him and make Batista Ragu feel uncomfortable. And one of the differences to him beating Novak 
uh, earlier in the season. Of course, he went into that match as an underdog. Mm. Here, kind of somewhat surprisingly, he's playing one of the legends of the game, and yet everybody has got him as a prohibitive favourite. So that's not also easy to, to handle as well. Mm -hmm. Very aggressive return. Wouldn't be a surprise to see a little more of that as he looks to potentially keep the points a little shorter. Well, at least we get to see a last image of Andy's Hawkeye challenging, which uh, <laughs> over the years hasn't necessarily been the most successful, but maybe this has improved in his time away. <laughs> Who knows? That's better than some I've seen from him. Too true. Mr. Murray has two challenges remaining. Well, it's a positive start, isn't it, from Murray in terms of his approach, which I, I guess is only to be expected, Mark. Yes, he's going to have to throw the shackles off, isn't he? He's uh, shown... Uh, well, he's seen what Batista Ragu was capable of earlier in the season. He knows what he's capable of when he's played him in the past. And, and that's the thing. Against Batista Ragu, he's beaten him as well by defending. He's extracted errors from the Spaniard. It's too easy to say, well, you've got to get after a guy like Batista. You actually need to defend as well. And I think that's the challenge for Andy with his hip out here, is to actually play the type of tactics that he knows beats Batista Ragu with mm -hmm. his style. Mm -hmm. Designs 13 in the world. Did Bautista real good a couple of seasons ago. It was really at the majors where he struggled last year. Didn't win too many matches at the highest level. think, Mark, from the Spaniard's point of view, having won in Doha, it was probably, time will tell, but it was probably a smart move not to go and defend in Auckland and give himself that week to recover. Absolutely. Um, you never quite know how things are going to go, but uh, he's made a, uh, a perfect decision there. He's just been very unlucky with the draw, hasn't he, that this, is, uh, this name's popped out next to his. Yeah, you remember last year he uh, played in Auckland, played a phenomenal final, didn't he, with Juan Martín del Potro, came here a couple of days later and lost to Fernando Vadasco in round one, so paid the price for what was an excellent week on Kiwi soil. We saw the benefit of a slow serve on the previous point, the benefit of a quick one there, but that's one area that a lot of people have spoken about Andy's tennis isn't it? second serve, but we saw 126K second serve extracting a, a missed return from Batista Agu. Some of his subtleties definitely were missed on the tour in terms of how he was able to conjure up wins and how he was keeping opponents off balance with that type of serving. People obsessed by speed. Mm -hmm. A 
what a sign for this after three games, early stages. But Andy Murray in front here against the 22nd seed. 2 1, we're on serve. Since Friday morning's press conference. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. An emotional Andy Murray suggesting this could be the last tournament of his career. Twisting and turning his opponent inside out, which is uh, Batista Agu's style. Murray with that ever-present anger at making an error at the end of that very complicated exchange. his ability to read the game, wasn't it, as well? Even in these opening three or four games, he may not be getting there quite as quickly as he was, but you can still see he's got a very good idea of where the ball's going, which is something I think you saw from a very early age, Mark. His anticipation is phenomenal. Yes, he's worked on his speed, and his straight-line speed to the net is, in, is phenomenal, but his anticipation's... Can you teach that anticipation? That's a great question. I would say you can improve it. I don't know. I think you, you certainly have a degree of it. Mm. But I think if you are a student of the game like Andy is and you watch what are the percentages in certain positions of the court with the ball at a certain height, you can give yourself a head start on where to move. But you have to immerse yourself so heavily in the sport always and from a young age to learn that part of the game. First point, Murray has won on the Spaniard serve. was so blatantly obvious over the last couple of days as if we didn't know it already was just the respect that Andy has in the locker room. I mean... Oh, frustration. Then. Oh, we know he's championed the feminism cause, we know he's been behind them, but it wasn't even so much about him as a tennis player. The majority of the social media posts I saw, and you would know more than me, Mark, were about him as a person. That was what struck me the most. I think it would be probably saying a little too much to say he's been one of the most misunderstood athletes of all time, but I would think that he's part of the conversation in that regard in terms of people judging and uh, jumping to conclusions about who he is as a man and as a person. Mm -hmm. And just in terms of who he is, 23rd of December, I'm hitting at the All England Club with my two daughters, and he's on the other court with Jamie, just hitting some balls. At the end of his practice, jogs over, didn't ask him, and just hits for five, ten minutes with my girls. Mm -hmm. Didn't need to do that. <laughs> Means the world to them. 
and obviously just from my point of view just to uh, to see him wanting to do that and it just again shows me the type of man he is This is smart play from Batista Agu right now. He has not got caught up in the commotion. He hasn't tried to do anything outside of his own comfort zone. He's testing, he's probing Murray, he's sticking balls up the middle of the court at an awkward height. Keeping the unforced errors down as well, isn't he? After 16 minutes, Spaniards keeping things watertight. Missed it. He wants to see it again, but he was the one setting the tempo in the exchange. The ball was called out. And we're talking about how flat he hits this one. Has he just got enough spin on it? May not have done. Fifteen thirty. Didi has. Mr. Batista Good has two challenges remaining. Gonna miss that sound when he does have to stick the rackets on the nail and hang them up because uh, it was always just a just a nice quick punchy come on, but you knew he was right in the midst of a battle when he did it. You knew where it was being directed, didn't you? Every single time, as that one was. Left for service. That's a very nice move forwards. Certainly made the Spaniard think about his pass. Murray's won three points in a row here. Some of the best hands in the game when he does need to hit a volley, but certainly understands when to transfer himself from the baseline to the net and how to do it effectively. And the spirit is well and truly there for Andy Murray. Murray leads As he comes through a percent. sticky situation. Murray actually one of eight British players in the main draw here in singles, men and women. That's the most since 1988. Impressive. Next day for the Brits. One thing Andy has been supportive is that his fellow countrymen and women. He has Thank you. always been right behind them. Thank you, take a seat quickly, please, sir. Bautista are good, serving here 2 3. Fifteen, love. Give us an idea of what he has given to those players, Mark. Guys that have been around him, I know he's a fierce watcher of the Challenger Tour, isn't he? He always knows what Brits are playing at the Challenger level. Well, he's a fierce watcher of tennis per se. Mm. I mean, 
but, you know, if it's on TV, if it's on streaming, if it's anywhere, he will have dipped into it. I was chatting to uh, Andy and he was telling me how he'd been watching some of Maria's matches from last year and listening to some of her on-court coaching, you know, and I was like, wow. I mean, his, his depth of knowledge. Much perfect. So there was something else with a bit of depth. He worked his man into a difficult position, but just couldn't initially get close enough to the net with that first step. Oh, what a strike that is. And the Spaniard caught flat-footed for once. Murray's making some inroads here. That is such a difficult shot, but if there's one shot that I think Andy will be able to hit in 20 years from now, even if he doesn't have a good hit for his backhand down the line, it is just so natural for him. Batista are good, and just able Three to move through the gears at the, the most important of stages. Had some pretty good two-handers over the years, but uh, would you put his right up there with the all-time greats? Murray's I'm talking about. Obviously. Yeah, I would. I mean, you'd, you'd still have to throw a few sort of, uh, well, you'd have to throw probably somebody like Nishikori's double-hander in there. He hasn't mm. won a, a, a slam, but arguably right up there with the likes of Novak, mm. Rafa's. Certainly isn't too shabby, is it? Mm -hmm. The problem is you kind of focus so much on the forehand, but the backhand has certainly won him an awful lot of big matches over the years. First serve so far, Murray. Eight of nine. Told me he couldn't move. 
as you so rightly said, Petch, everything's relative. 15 all. I mean, what a rally. And I know our focus very much on Andy, obviously, because of the occasion this potentially could be, but credit to Batista Ragu there. That was magnificent. Get a good look at the Spaniards' forehand grip there. It's uh, not too extreme at all, is it? Let for service. To redirect off a pull like that, just 133. You, you've got to make sure you get your feet through the shot if you wait for it to come to you. And by the time it's getting there, it's probably what 80 k's, 70 k's. You've now got to generate pace to hit a ball that's going to beat somebody like Murray. It's got a shot of Pepe Vendrell, who's a man who's guiding Bautista Ogut's career. Replay the point. Was a sort of half-hearted call, really. And he corrected himself to good, so if you can challenge if you want to, because his final call was in. Replay the point. 30-15. Sorry, not opting to challenge. Third ace from the former world number one. set continues here on serve. Andy Murray going Murray well four games to three. in this Perfect. first round match. He's up 4-3. Certainly where the new balls will help Murray. That ball just traveling through the air, just marginally quicker. And in the end, he found a way through. Yeah, it's just a question of trying to neutralize the first serve, isn't it, for Batista Ragu? You know, he's somebody that locates a great serve. He doesn't necessarily get a lot of power behind it. Likes to make a high percentage of first serves. He's always had a bit of an abdominal weakness, Batista Ragu. He can actually practice his serve as much as he would like because of it. 
And it's always been a big difference between the two of them as well. So good. 13, 15. He actually strings his racket pretty loosely. Bautista wrote good as well. I was having a conversation in Doha with the stringers, and he was one of the loosest that week. He was uh, around about 44, 43 pounds. So uh, pretty loose by uh, today's standards. didn't it? Just that little change of pace. Spanner didn't quite know where he was going, did he? And Murray very much involved here. Jamie, of course, a winner last week in Sydney with Bruno Suarez. Easy to liberally throw around the world genius, but he is a genius. You look at that point and you understand the depth, the array of skills he has to unpick an opponent as accomplished as Batista Ragu. And you said it would be a big game as the pressure mounts, and you just sense Bautista or Good is just feeling it ever so slightly here. Murray's first break point. Yes. from Batiste Ragu. He's obviously not feeling as though he's winning that forehand to forehand exchange. He's getting a little bit because that really opened up the door for Murray. Doesn't often miss those. Plenty of room, wasn't there as well? Murray just couldn't find it. The Spaniard do there. Advantage, Phenomenal dig. And Murray was left handcuffed. Yep. Brilliant approach shot. Hasn't done this all match for Batista Ragu to recognize the situation and react. Just sensational. Murray unlucky. He's playing somebody that's so confident right now on the big points. He's played superbly. Forgotten only he beat Djokovic, he beat Vavrinka, he beat Burdick as well in Doha. Outstanding week. And that is an game impressive game defended. because the spotlight was on him for really the first time. Games all, first Murray can't quite make the breakthrough. And it also showed the depth of game that Batista Ragu's got. You know, sometimes you look at the, uh, the Spaniard, he looks a little mechanical. He understands his weaknesses very well, arguably more so than his strengths, so he protects them. But there were some nice little touches in there, some nice quick-footed uh, movement along with quick thinking as well, because Murray threw a fair few tricks at him in that. Thank <laughs> you. 
lap 15. from the old school Spanish cloth, isn't it, in terms of the way he approaches the sport. There's a degree of humility about him. There's no nonsense. There's no fuss around what he does. He's not in this sport for stardom. He's in it for the competitive nature of it, the professionalism that he's shown. Think back to the greats of the 90s, Albert Costa, Alex Carreccia, those guys, warriors. Sergi Bruguera. To name just a few. Things still as good in Spain in terms of the developmental side discussion. I know you like to have a fair bit. No, yeah, I hear it's not quite as good. Not really. I think a lot of it actually, and it's harsh to say, was courtesy of the uh, economic sort of. Uh, meltdown really in 2008 I think it hit families hard in Spain as it did everywhere and it and it certainly took a lot of tournaments off the schedule for the Spanish players slowly coming back but it's it's definitely had a massive dent in their production line no question about it whether they were going to continue with the run of Grand Slam champions and top tenors I'm not sure anyway but it certainly hurt them Fifteen. Surprising miss. Just, I'm yet to believe as well that perhaps in the last decade or so, more Spanish players have actually chosen to go down the, Sp the American university route, which is something that maybe 15, 20 years ago was almost unheard of because they had so many options back home. But now, America is actually a more enticing route. One of the few players that returns with a backhand grip these days as well, isn't he, Batista mm -hmm. Agut? Most with the forehand, and then slide it round to the two-hander. That's one of the first shots I think I've seen tonight where he's just been a little bit laboured getting there. And whether that was the twist, he felt as though there was an opportunity. Batista Ragu inside the singles line could have gone down the line and he was kind of moving that way. He was certainly a bit late getting back. A lot of tight games in this opening set and this one is following suit. That's a tremendous point and a very classy finish from the Spaniard. But he doesn't mind 14. absorbing pace, does he, Batiste Ragu? And Murray threw an awful lot at him in that rally, but then it was the Spaniard who got up to net, and he is fine at finishing there as well. Good technique. He's not a guy who come up a whole lot, is he? But when he does... He tends to make it count. Break point.
A physical exchange. And Murray looking a little late, but a little fatigued at the end of it. It's taken 45 minutes. But the first break does go the way of the Spaniard. He'll serve for the first set at 5-4. Last 16 is as far as he's ever gone at a major. If he continues to play at the level he's produced at the start of this season, one suggests the next step might not be too far away. Serving here for the opening set. Initially, Murray forced very deep, and then the quick thinking here. Didn't sound like a string went, but uh, just something amiss with the frame. Unbelievable, isn't it? 13, He's so no. understated, Batiste Ragu, and yet he, his tennis is actually pretty flamboyant if you really analyse it. It's not just purely ABC hitting to spots. He, he does conjure up shots at times that are absolutely magical. Magic off that the return. The ball was called out. I don't think he's going to get a lot of change out of this particular challenge. Spaniard. There's three set points here. Mr. Maris went into the ball on the right, center service line. The ball was called in. Both players almost at the chair. It would seem they both know that uh, this one has caught a piece of the line, but Hawkeye seemingly uh, malfunctioning at the moment. Oh, there you go. Because there Ladies is always a, an official in the Hawkeye, Hawkeye booth for moments the like that. The challenge on the screen. However, the review official confirms that the call was out. Second serve. Phenomenal dig. And what an impression. 
impressive set that was with so much going on here in what could be Andy Murray's final event of his career. He's going to have to come from behind if he's to win this opening round match. 6-4, Bautista Ragu. Yeah, it was Bill Knowles was the man that Murray turned to in the uh, autumn period when he spent a good deal of time down in Philadelphia there, a man who's specializes in rehab, getting athletes back from seemingly impossible situations. And uh, can be sure that Andy left it all out there in some of the unique exercises that he was given. He got left here. He will kick off set number two. Love 15. Well, this is where we don't know if he's going through any personal turmoil in his mind, feeling as though I've got three good sets in my legs, in my hip, but I don't have four, and what that opening set means to him on that level. as well it's also worth remembering and, and looking back at the time span and careers of some of the all-time greats you know Murray's had I was looking this morning I think 14 years isn't it something like that at the top of the game Pete Sampras had 14 years at the top of the game before calling it quits we're just in an era where we've got a certain Swiss guy who's 37 and is still doing things that are just completely abnormal so we're comparing him and wondering where that came about I know obviously from Andy's perspective, he'd desperately love to be out here, but a 14-year career is still a, a very good one to all intents and purposes. Oh. Stefan Edberg was 15. Was, you know, these are the conversations that, of course, and the people in the conversations that Andy wants to be in. It's unfortunate to be in uh, Madal and Djokovic's era, but to be in Benjamin Button's as well was uh, <laughs> was definitely something that he wasn't planning for. But you're right; it, it isn't. It is by those standards a very normal career. You get a few sort of uh, aberrations on that. Your Jimmy Connors's uh, mm -hmm. obviously you go back to pre sort of open era and the crossover. You had players playing for a long time. In the big picture, it's just the abruptness of it, isn't it? That has not only hurt him, but hurt his legion of fans and, and those that have so enjoyed watching him over the years. It's how clinical the end has come and has been. It's what's tough to take. More so than anyone else, of course, for the man down on the court. Far from done here, though. He'll have to defy the odds once again. But he does get on the board early in set number two. Came so close here, didn't he? Could not have come any closer at this tournament. Five times. Lifting the runners-up trophy. Four times, losing in the final. To Novak Djokovic. Another occasion. When he was uh, beaten in his first final here by Roger Federer. Couldn't have done much more.
no mercy. 15 all. No, there won't be any compassion from Badisa Agu, and nor should they. The agony and exity of his many fans still etched on their faces after another valiant effort to chase down a lost cause. Oh, a little bit of framing there, but no one would deny this guy a bit of luck. 15, 13. And he's just got a window of opportunity here on the Spaniard serve. And he's given himself two chances to break here. That is an outrageous forehand. Caught the return perfectly off the sort of high part of the frame so he could create the angle. That wasn't good fortune. made the Spaniard just work a little harder on those two points. But he set it up with a beautifully massaged return with no pace. Batista Raguca could do nothing with that off the two-hander. And then Andy was lining up for the big backhand, just couldn't connect with it in the way that he wanted to. That's a very nice change of direction. Bautista or good. Such a difficult guy to outmaneuver. And Murray did it in fine style there. Advantage. Bautista good. Answered the bell, the Spaniard, isn't he? When he's had to so far in this One match, all, he's been required to up it. And he's uh, been good. It's been a great match. I mean, obviously, we've got the uh, narrative of this potentially being Andy's last match in Australia, but when you actually look at the quality of the hitting out here and the, the way that they both played, it's been magnificent. I would say the signs are very positive right now that regardless of whether he wins here, he is going to be able to compete at Wimbledon if uh, he can maintain this kind of level of flexibility and strength in that hip joint. Yeah, he's due to play some events in February, and he's got some commitments to some indoor tournaments. Again, it's all very tentative right now.
guess it really depends on the pain threshold, doesn't it? Ultimately, because he can compete, he can hit the ball. Movement clearly is not where it wants to be, not where it is ever going to be again. But it really depends on the pain threshold, how much he can... Well, he used his angle so well, you've got to be so careful when you open up the court. Batista Agu did that there, and Murray just hooking it, short angle. The ball still sweetly timed off those strings. Yeah, I guess what I meant when I'm talking about pain threshold is more about how he feels tomorrow, isn't it, and the next day, because, as he said, he can play a couple of practice sets, and the next day, it'd be very challenging. Something he doesn't want to have to endure. Yay, Murray. Heartwarming stuff from the former world number one. And he's battling hard here. Down a set. He finds himself in front in the second. 2-1. As Darren Cahill put it so aptly, a man who has emptied the tank, Andy Murray, in his career. He has left nothing on the table. And he is keeping this competitive right now. This man is, as Mark says, having to sustain a, a level, a high level, to keep himself in front here. Last year, lost his mother very suddenly in the spring. His father suffering a freak accident, something Mark and I were discussing before we came on air that has left him in a very sorry state. On court, he had a number of injuries, didn't he, as well? And during the grass court season, missed a large chunk of the US summer. Wasn't one of the best juniors in Spain as well. You know, we uh, always talk a lot about how you try and find these great players, but Batista Gu was not one of the better juniors coming through at all. But a great work ethic from the north of Spain. It's not even the greatest weather up there at times. I found a, a superb coach in Esteban Carril who did such a great job on him technically, his patterns. Esteban Caru, you may know from working with Johanna Conta uh, as well. And from that point of view, you know, he, he just built a very durable game and just had a, a magnificent outlook on, well, the journey may take this long, but I'm going to be the best that I can. He, he's another one. You talk about Andy emptying the tank. Batista Agu has emptied it as well. cry of good movement you just heard coming I mean, from the mouth of Andy Murray.
let second service. It's relentless, isn't it, Nick, from this guy? Not only gives you nothing from a tennis standpoint, it gives you nothing from an emotional standpoint, does he? And that's a lot where Andy's charm came. The wearing of his heart mm -hmm. on his sleeve always showed his emotion. You always knew that he cared so passionately about his job. How many people can say that, regardless of whether it was at times slightly misdirected? Did it sap some energy from him at times against some of his great rivals in some of those grueling matches? But it was the essence of him. This is the first sign, isn't it? That he looks like he's starting to struggle a little bit here and labor physically. Yeah, he didn't get out of the serve at love 15, did he? To hit the four way and then there, pushed backwards, there was just no, that first step that was lightning. It was just not where it needs to be. A couple of break points here. actually looked down at the unreturned serves number. Murray's still very high, 43% of unreturned serves so far in this match. These are good conditions for service here mm. at the Australian Open. You hit your spots, you get a lot of reward. Could do with another one here. It's another outstanding point. And Roberto Bautista Agu proves to be impenetrable. Tremendous defense. And the Spaniard strengthening his grip on this first round match here. He leads now by a set and a break. Say it quickly, please. Certainly a penny for his thoughts. Shaking his head. Again, just letting a little bit of frustration out on those around him. Throw a good here, serving at 3 2. Fifteen love. And Kiathavong on the far left there as well, the Fed Cup captain for Great Britain. Forty love.
Jane. Well, certainly good. feels, as you suggested, Marcus, that there's just been a marginal drop off in the level that Murray's well, able good. to produce out here. I mean, it genuinely does, doesn't it? Mm. And uh, I think that's what's been so super impressive for a set and a half that he was actually able to mix it with somebody like Batista Group, clearly on limited preparation, clearly on limited fitness. Um, and yet, his ball striking ability, his tennis IQ, was able to keep him relatively competitive. But th this is the painful period, I'm sure, for him mentally, is knowing that he's just unable to, to do what he knows he needs to to win this match. Well, in this set number two, Bautista are good has only made two unforced errors in a set that's what been <laughs> 30 minutes. home in the last couple of days as to where he sits in terms of Britain's sporting greats all time. And a lot of hardened soccer journos back home who have uh, lived and breathed football as we call it. And many of them picking Andy as uh, right up there as you would expect. Many of them were there, that famous July day in 2013, to witness something that so many thought they'd never see. and manufactures another wonderful backhand down the line winner here. Again, the depth just pushing Batista Gu off the baseline and, and you could see the Spaniard unable to track that one down. player himself. To Jamie Murray's right, Alan McDonald, his coach. It's a good game to win. It was a must-win game in truth. And he limps and hobbles his way back to the chair. It's Bautista or a good up a set and a break here in the second. Do you think back home they've uh, made the most of his achievements or not? Is that the sound of a pin being pulled out of a grenade? <laughs> um, no, I don't think so. Mm. No. I think uh, it's a big question. There's a lot of parts to the answer, which I won't go into now. But yeah, I, I think more could have been done. Mm -hmm. 15, love.
30, love. Certainly. You'd hope has inspired a lot of players, not just British players. Youngsters around the world. Love. From the tiny town of Dunblane, of course. Spent his early years in Barcelona. Sacrifices were certainly made early, weren't they? Very much so. And uh, from Andy's point of view, it was very much about trying to find a place that he could get him to practice against the right calibre of players. It wasn't ever really for him necessarily about playing tennis mm -hmm. as such as learning to beat the best was really where he needed to go to uh, to study that and make it happen, which is obviously what happened at Casal Sanchez in Barcelona all those years ago. 15 love. He never really needed a coach, to be honest, Nick. Mm. He just needed time. Mm -hmm. And time, to be fair, wasn't always his friend because he was in such a rush. Let for service. Well, that was a, a pretty loud noise as he set up to hit that 30, subtle 15. bit of finesse, reminiscent of the big noise at the US Open against Kona Shikori, which yes. uh, kind of derailed the challenge that year. Absolutely. Sure, where that came from, but didn't deter Murray. That wasn't it. A great look from Andy. He'll be delighted that the return sailed long, but the little hop on the left leg there, or was it right actually, that uh, he made after that would suggest things getting a little bit worse physically. Length for service. Certainly the discomfort looks to be ever more obvious. Right now he will try and push the Spaniard and pressure the Spaniard as he looks to move ahead by two sets to love. And look up towards his corner. A good serving for a two sets to love lead. Love. And this is why, when the draw came out, not only was Batista and Gu in great form, but he's an aggressive baseliner. He's going to push Murray to have to move so dynamically all the time that it's just going to test that hip every single rally.
And I think, as you say, Patch, he's not just an aggressive baseliner, he's a confident aggressive baseliner right now. If he'd have lost first run of Doha, first run of Auckland come in here, and then, then he's suddenly in this matchup, in this environment, it's a different contest, isn't it? Emotionally, mentally, but couldn't be feeling any better. And he's made Murray pay. for all his worth at the last four and almost giving it a slap down the other end and it produced an error well it had to be a special shot because he wasn't really going to be coming back was he getting his feet in position. to make something happen. Uh, there was a quality second serve and Murray just Thank you. slightly caught out of position. Here's set point. Uh, yeah. Roberto yeah. Bautista, a good moves ahead uh, by two sets to love here. To Is he going to end Andy Murray's career this evening? As we, uh, the clock heads towards half past eight in the evening. Third set, Moray to serve. Family affair. Mum has uh, so often been courtside, of course, for so many of his big matches. A lady had so much of a say in the path that he took and continues to take. set of hands he has always had and showcasing them in this last hurrah so well said Nick absolutely he's always had this he's always had a great instinct from where his opponent is what shot would work how to defuse their attack one of the best defenders the game's ever seen Judgment.
15.30. I think there are opponents across the world that are still having nightmares about chasing some of those down, aren't they? <laughs> it's probably retired a few people. Favourite player, of course, was Fabrice Santoro for a, a very long time. There's a guy with a, a wide ranging set of skills, if ever there was one. He carved a few players up, still does. has had one of the best cross-court forehands, whether it's there, the three-quarter ball, pulling his opponent out of court, or the pass on the run. How many of those miraculous shots have we witnessed over the decade or so? Jay Murray. It's a slightly loose-looking forehand, and Murray I'll accept that as he gets himself up and running in this third set. This was a year ago, too far off to the day when he had surgery here in this city. decides to have more surgery post tennis I would imagine he probably will to allow him to do the things in his life he wants to do and some talk about a, a hip replacement that's a, a drastic option but uh, I guess if that's what needs to be done that's what needs to be done at some point in the future Fifteen love. So he's a fairly big say, doesn't he, in his management company that he's set up looking after player representation, I think is probably a better way of describing it. Led to believe that he's quite keen to go down that route at some point, more involvement. I mean, the biggest problem for him, isn't it, that he spent a lifetime following his unbridled passion, uh, the thing that gives him oxygen, the reason that he gets out of bed in the morning, um, and he's tasted the sweet nectar of ultimate success at some of these major events. So to fill that void, that abyss that will happen, don't underestimate that for somebody with his passion for this game. Going to be hard to find a replacement. talked about already seeing a, a psychologist in order to perhaps just exercise a few of those potential demons that as you say are obviously going to be there aren't they how you deal with what's to come problem that all high level sportsmen not just Andy Murray will have to cope with Forty fifteen. Mr. Murray's 
Defense advantage. Game. Bautista good. One game all. Third set. Reflex action from Andy to go to the challenge, but at the end of the day, he knew it was going to have missed its target. Well, it looks cruel, but it's the perfect yeah, play 15. from Batista Raku with a drop shot. Watch Murray here bang his racket on the ground. How often have we seen that over the years to get more traction so that he can get a quicker first step and second step and get going to the drop shot? Yeah, I remember talking to Ron Yu at length about that very issue, and he said, you can't believe how banged up and his rackets get. It's something you actually sometimes don't notice, but as you say... Punishment is racket took from actually his efforts in trying to make himself get to the ball that little bit quicker. It's got problems here though. Once again in trouble on surf. And Batista Agu brings up three break points. Yeah, he did very well to recover here, didn't he? Look where he is, where he finishes. Very tough ball to control at that height. Another big breakthrough on the horizon here. thought that was going to be called out because he initially put his racket up to challenge but there was no call forthcoming maybe a little bit of miscommunication when i first looked at you i i did like this are instructed right from the off to challenge in a clear manner. Not to be, Artista or good was left a little exposed, but Murray just couldn't take advantage. Two games to one, third set. And it's looking ominous at the moment. It's two sets and a break. The Spaniard heading for the second round. Mum Judy out of her seat. She's a busy lady as well these days.
15, love. Where once perhaps he would have been content to find a way to get that ball back into play and reset the point. No longer the case. Coming back to the exact point you made earlier on, Mark, just a moment or two ago, how been forced to adapt. strikes for a while this one the absence of alternatives certainly clears the mind doesn't it and he's uh, got nowhere left to go now but just to go for all-out winners <laughs> Turns. Putting the Spaniard on the back foot. a unique talent. <laughs> Yet to break the Spaniard serve, remember, after very nearly two hours. points and a large majority of the crowd here are up out of their seats that's not applause that's admiration as he breaks for the first time. He drank in all the great players, didn't he? Their abilities on a tennis court, their strengths, where he saw their weaknesses, and it stimulated his own creativity over the years to become one of the game's finest ever players.
And those penning the obituaries at 30 love I just want to hold their pens for a while. Well, he made a country of disbelievers into believers, so... He's definitely capable of miracles. There didn't look to be a whole lot left, did there? No. Proving people wrong, and as Mark is suggesting, has never been any trouble for this man who reached the pinnacle of the sport. Eight points in a row, 3-2. These guys have been along for the ride, Matt Little, right from the start, pretty much. And they're nicknamed Treacle. Too many guys in the world as close to Murray as Matt is. Or named Treacle. Mm. Which is probably a good thing. Well, when you do have the ability that he does have at his fingertips, as we saw in the previous returning game, that's why he gets so frustrated. It's also a great discipline for these great players that when they don't measure up to their own high standards and what they're capable of, they're able to still continue to compete with the right mentality. There's a lot of players out there that don't have that ability. You get more frustrated when they don't live up to what they feel that they're capable of. In that they haven't even produced it. Murray can time and time again. One of the great attributes of all the great champions. Game about this number. Three games all, third set. So fans, spirits dampen temporarily as Bautista or Good just restores order. One thing's for sure when Andy does eventually hang up the rackets, if it's to be after this week or after Wimbledon or whatever it may be, whatever he does, he will be competitive at, won't he? I remember you telling me a number of stories, Mark, a couple of years ago. Anyone that has played anything with Murray. Just how fierce he is, and I'm sure uh, you've got plenty of those stories and plenty of those experiences. Yeah, well, when he stayed with me for, for when I was coaching with him, he uh, he wouldn't let my youngest daughter, who was five at the time, win on a on a black motorbike that you had to like you know self propel yourself. We did races out in front of the house, and he'd never let we almost <laughs> let her win, but crushed her spirit. I said, well, why? <laughs> you know, she was never going to win. My other daughter had a that game bop it where you pull someone out, you spin something. He spent an evening up there beating her record. Came down in the morning, ruined her breakfast. Even the other day, just hitting with my daughters at Wimbledon, he uh, he said first person to miss does five press ups. There always had to be something on it, and well, it got the best out of himself that way, and it does get the best out of you. There's no question. 
Game. An excellent service game and a clenched fist in the direction of his team and I'm sure in the pathway of the Spaniard. It's not going to roll over. He's up 4-3 here. It's been a hot one here on day one of the Australian Open. Temperatures in the high 30s and there'll be more of the same for the next couple of days. So away. such thing as a lost cause. How many times over the years did we enjoy seeing him win those sorts of points? I say we, I'm not talking about the opposition. <laughs> there was a fair few on the wrong end of that one as well. Let for service. You'd be pretty disappointed if you could return 149 mile an hour serves and couldn't kick a football at the same time. He was pretty deep handy at that as well as a, a teenager. Tennis got lucky. Mm. Poor Taylor. Good. Four games yeah, slightly self-mocking good game from Murray what he was looking for there Unfolded, but just when he's asked to kind of just put a little more into it, it's just not quite there for him.
percentage of the draw mark do you think Murray would have beaten on the men's side, given the level we've seen? I know you alluded to it earlier on, you feel the level's been there. What do you think? How many guys would he have got the better of out here? I mean, tough to say top 20 just entirely, but I would have said about 20% of the draw could have got the better of him and the rest he would have beaten. strike that he has on the back end seemingly tough to get a read on and this was the case here again Let's see how long he holds the shot Murray had committed sure about the call was he uh, it's too late 30, now 14. may not have been the cleanest return but it proved to be a very effective one and as the noise levels here in the melbourne arena are raised once more thank you things are getting critical for andy murray a career of surprising people he still manages to find something else desperate times quite desperate measures a shot of pure brilliance another almost hits the same 40, spot 30. and he's lost none of his desire to extract perfection from everybody around him including the officials he was getting irritated by the fact that the shot clock was ticking down and the umpire wasn't telling the crowd to settle down Responding in kind. Fair to say it's a little fresher at this time of year in Scotland. And those that have made their way down from that part of the world are making themselves heard. Thank <laughs> you. 
What a lovely bit of ingenuity that was. Tremendous. He never played for the money. He played for the challenges. He played to play his rivals. And a point like that sums up everything about Andy Murray. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. did well just to get out of the way of it he knew he was going to go after the second serve didn't he and he actually delivered a good one and the follow-up is not as good does Batista Ragu get him on the run does he fire him out wide does he open up the angle potentially so good so good, clinical. 40, 30. Come on, Roberta, a bit of romance. Mm. Let yeah. us dream. Had a fair bit to do there, didn't he, as well, because the little chip was a nasty one. <laughs> he remains stony faced. Let for service. Just magnificent. Thank you. He's actually won a significant more amount of the short points. Those rallies of 0 to 4. Murray has been on top the large majority of them. And that is going to give this man a set point.
Can you believe it? By the thinnest of margins. Batista Agu stays in this second set, first with the Hawkeye challenge, then with a net cord. And from where we were sitting, that looked destined to go in the net. But is it in Murray's destiny to win this third set? It would be a fitting tribute to his fighting spirits if he were. Thank you. a great shot because it was such a good pickup from Batista Agu and he was chasing to the open space he would have had to run in a long semicircle there to get that drop shot just under hit it led for service Let for service. Oh. Given everything that went on in the last five minutes, five that is an admirable effort from Roberto Bautista Agud. He's not got too many friends inside this stadium. their respect I'm sure he was really appropriately aggressive on his second serve there Batista Agu getting back to the tennis for a second rather than the moment that we're all witnessing here that was pretty special to defend his serve with that type of serving he found the forehand of Murray rather than the backhand That's the problem for Annie. If you go back and watch that, that's such a quick return. He's there, but he can't push off from that neutral position, and he just takes too long to get out of that position there, and suddenly he has to defend. No way back in the point against somebody with the quality of Batista Agu. value of movement in this sport of course everything but it's not so much as how quickly you get there but how quickly you get out of the shot and this guy was one of the very best in every department and again just a couple of steps in Change the dynamic of the rally. What a game. What a couple of games. Strong stuff from the former Murray world number one. Who's ahead again in this third set as we head towards a breakout. 6-5.
15 all. Murray looking down at his racket in frustration and his inability to get a clean contact on that one. It's just relentless, the first serves that he has to keep returning, though, isn't it? Again, Batista Gut up above 70% of those first serves finding the target. in total, but it's been a, a lot of damage done by that shot, isn't it? Again, it may not have been an outright winner, but oh, it's done enough damage to win the point. Game. Well, Classy. Really classy. Six, Such a on. comprehensive Third performance here from break. Batiste Ragu. Despite the uh, inspiration from time. Murray at the other end of the court, his revival in this third set, Batiste Ragu continuing to go about his play, controlling the things that he can control on his side of the court. Tie break time it is. Murray will kick it off. Led for service. Too much margin for error on that back end every now and again. It's a, such a flat hit, There's not too much left arm in it. And that time did not have the required spin. of skill two, zero, and there weren't too many players in the men's game able to engineer that sort of shot from that position first blood to Murray here Actually, his first ace. 
for four games. It's the 14th of the match. Batista or good had a little window of opportunity to get in, didn't take it. And Murray able to break him down. And he now has a good grip of proceedings in the breakout. So Madison into the call on the left service line. The ball was called in. I suspect he's not going to get too much change out of this one. A little closer than perhaps both men had, had thought. They were both walking to the chair. Murray. Mr. Murray has one challenge remaining. Remain poker faced from the very first moment he stepped out onto court here in this most unique of atmospheres. And he's been asked to play the role of the villain in many respects. Breathtaking stuff, and how well the Spaniard did. And the shades of Murray at his very best. His movement may have looked inhibited, but not there. movement we've seen from him all day. And what a way to follow it up as well. Given the physical nature of the previous point to then get up to the line and produce that. Anticipated the slice back cross court so well. And around the ball here. 
nothing wrong with that defensive slice, but that shot right out of the top draw. He's missed it. Murray manufacturing a return out of nowhere. And would you believe this? They would. Thank you. Two set points. chance on his own serve to reduce the deficit. In the most extraordinary fashion, Andy Murray takes the third set here. Seeing in many ways is believing. He looked down and out, down a break. That look is all you need to know. Murray takes the third on the breaker. Seven points to five. And should we really be surprised, given the mountains he's climbed over the years to the very top of the sport, he's ensured that this match and we'll go on a little longer and if you look back at his record in terms of coming back from two sets to love down if that is even at all in the conversation here certainly is a little more than it was 45 minutes ago take your seats quickly please thank you Fifteen love he's been able to do it on nine previous occasions murray and is coming back from two sets to love down the last time of course you may remember against a certain Radek Stepanek at the French Open in 2016. Fair to say that the asterisk by this one might be a little larger, though, Mark, <laughs> in terms of comebacks from two sets of the love down. It would be a fitting tribute, and it's it, you know it's remarkable to me sitting here watching him fight like he is and turning these impossible situations around. When he was 16, 17, there were a lot of people telling me that he was a little soft, mm -hmm. that he wasn't going to even make it mm -hmm. because of his the way that he competed. So much criticism early on in his career as well about the lack of fitness. And he turned himself into uh, one of the fittest, strongest, fastest players the men's game's ever seen. 
game one is not good. New balls, please. First game, fourth set. Doesn't quite tick each one of those boxes right now, but uh, he is trying his damnedest. He just leans over at the chair just to give himself a bit of a respite here. As I've watched his career progress, I kind of uh, always thought of that quote by uh, Arthur Schopenhauer, where he says, every truth passes through three stages before it's recognized. In the first, it's ridiculed. In the second, it's opposed. And in the third, it's regarded as self-evident. And when you watch him here today, everyone kind of says, well, he was always destined for this, wasn't he? But there were people that didn't actually, and some well-respected people that didn't feel as though he was going to have the career that he has proved to have. And once again tonight, we see why. Love 15. Two calls. Batista are good. Signing against the challenge. Inveras, the Raki Moore. Confident. How's the serving ball? Just absolutely pinpoint accuracy and probably a good job. I hope he's not shaking his right leg out because of cramping, but it's not looking great. Is that a physio call or? Walking with a purpose, but uh, let's see where one he goes. No, it doesn't look, look like Fourth it. <laughs> I think back now to one of the uh, unscientific things we did. Uh, when he, After Wimbledon, when I started working with him, did a 10-week stint uh, in the States playing a mixture of challenges and ATP tournaments, and there was no science to that. That was just play, get your ranking up. And we got to the Open, and uh, he was uh, cramping in his first-round match uh, against Pavel. So basically decided to um, double up the powder in the, <laughs> in the water bottles. Mm -hmm. Because in my own naive way, and we weren't really uh, flush with cash at that moment, with trainers, I thought that that would be a good way of getting more electrolytes into the uh, system uh, to produce that iconic picture of him throwing up. <laughs> I think we moved past that particular incident about three years after it happened. <laughs> Many lessons learned, that's for sure. Yeah, lesson number one, if I'm mixing your electrolyte drinks, don't drink it. I think you're mixing drinks that are stronger than electrolytes <laughs> these days, Patch. to the pass. Interesting to know what's going through his mind right now, wouldn't it? Oh. 
for 2.30. He's always been his own harshest critic, as much as at times the one thing that people really do talk about with him is his volume of noise, his uh, monologue at times of misery towards his box, but he's always been his harshest critic. What a finish. Batista are good. Putting an end to that game in some style. To a fourth hour here. It's Murray. Trails by two sets to one. And two games to one. Take your seats quickly, please. Thank you. Andy Murray continues to fight tooth and nail to keep himself above water in what will be his final Australian Open. We know that for certain. Serving here, one, two. Well, good indicator there that he's feeling as though he's still got to expand his horizons in terms of the level of attack and the width and the risk value as well, which is going higher and higher because uh, the way that Murray is still able to stay with him here. Whereas at the start, and for a large majority of this match, you kind of felt like the patterns just keep moving Andy, play the way that he wanted to. Um, suited Batista Gu, but indicated indications in this game is that he feels as he feels as though that's not going to be enough. It's that change of direction that Murray finds difficult at the moment with the hip problem and Batista Gu probing. See if he can find it there with a higher frequency than he has done recently. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. to do in this game.
Rodriguez. This has got a little complicated. Remarkably, that is Murray's first double of the match after very nearly three hours. It's either player's first double. Pace to the two hander. Yeah, it's gutsy stuff once again. Bautista or Good had a look, but that was all he got. And Murray draws level at two. Two games old, fourth set. Iconic pitches. We don't know how he's going to pull up tomorrow, but in the big picture, there has been enough good tennis. Surely, if he's able to keep himself in good enough shape to keep himself out there for another couple of months, it will. It will he and only he will know, of course, what he's going through right now and how he pulls up. But from a tennis perspective, it's been a lot to admire. play that was 13, particularly 15. found the back end with the first volley and Spaniards, no nonsense approach. Well, good Serving him well. Continues to lead. And by two sets to one. He's up 3 2 in the fourth. One of the most preeminent British sportsmen or women of his time makes his way back out onto the court once again. Squeezing every last drop out of what he's got left. Shares his passion. That little up out of his feet once more. Let her service. His oratories of optimism have been a little less frequent than his monologues of misery, but uh, he's been in a pretty buoyant mood tonight, to be honest with himself. The occasional sarcastic comment, but for the most part, he has been well and truly on his own side. Oh. 
love 13. Interesting movement, wasn't he? Just kind of pulled out of it, didn't he? His right leg just came up. It's uncomfortable to me. Got a bit close to it, didn't he? With mm. his back leg. Mm. Had to improvise. Thank you. Two minutes shy of the three hour mark. I can't imagine there have been too many practice sessions over the last few weeks that have been anywhere near three hours, Mark. I, again, I can't say that for certain, but. To the player, please. Certainly nowhere near this sort of level, anyway. It was a risk, but it was a risk that paid off. He made the ground easily. He was in perfect position to make it. Look how low he stays through the hit here. Batista Agu would be surprised he's missed that. Missed it. Murray made it very difficult in truth. Fabulous game from Murray. Three games all, fourth set. As we do hit the fourth hour of this remarkable match. He's resuscitated his challenge here, mainly through muscle memory of the battles that he's had, the scars that he carries. And as you say, I doubt he's had any practices that have been even close to this kind of uh, length in time and pressure and intensity, and yet somehow he's dragged himself back into it. way the point panned out will be encouraging, won't it? That's the one. Half a step too slow, but half a step to Andy Murray is uh, taking away his magic. point he's wanted to go there so often as he's dragged him out tired him out and without harping on about it whereas a couple of years ago he might have been intent just to block that one back into play and back his movement that's no longer the case <laughs> is that a saber yeah, well he's good friends with Nick isn't he and uh, 
He's taken a little page out of his uh, book there. If Nick does have one, who knows? We'll find out tomorrow. Anyway, that's all for his side. 4-3. Well, the Australian fans delighting in this uh, defiance from Murray. From a British standpoint, he's uh, allowed us to dare to dream. And he has delivered himself. Is he producing a miracle in Melbourne? It's still a long way to go, but he's given himself more than a fighting chance. to be made that he has forced Bautista Rogut to play at the very highest level, isn't he? In order for him to be in this position. Continues to do so. Turn by his standards. Is Murray a decent advantage in this game? Points continue to come on the serve. <laughs> Mr. Mary sat into the call on the right near sideline. The ball was called out. Mr. Murray has two challenges remaining. Mr. Murray fell into the call on the right center service line. The ball was called out. The challenge seemed like a reflex action because the moment he went to it, he didn't look that convinced that he had made the right decision to go for it. The frustration boiling over. Yeah. But he's being proved to be correct. The yeah, there was a degree of anger in that, wasn't there? Good reason. Yeah. Palm 
comes down on the far side. Bautista or Good will take a closer inspection, but we all have to swallow it. Games for a piece. Well, in that instance, happy for him that he got a first serve. I still think it's one of the most archaic rules that we have that you get a first serve after that. Should definitely only be a second in general. But let everyone hold off for the rule change till tomorrow. <laughs> Dream killer. How was that? Just flung his racket out. He looked like he was flailing there, just trying to find a way to get anything on the ball. Didn't really matter if it was string or not, and I'm not sure it was pure string. A bit of frame. Credit Batista Agu. Terrific get. Oh, and he's followed it up with that. Stunning. That's such a great pattern of Andy's. The deep ball, not hit with a lot of velocity, but just great depth down the line. This one, hide over the net, and then the short angle here. But Batista Agu from outside the singles line, dragging it across Murray. This coach doesn't show a whole lot of emotion either. this for a game. Oh, he's dominated all three points and finds himself down 40 love. Trying to get a little topspin on that one. The racket face closed, not your traditional kind of open face to pop it over. Drifted long. No, he didn't play a bad game, but this man was a cut above. Couldn't get past the first round here a year ago. In very different circumstances this evening. He's close to doing just that here. A 22nd seed. And he's made such a fast start to his 2019 season. Oh, with that pronounced limp. Making his way back out. Will it be for the final time? He's back firmly against the wall here. Moore in the chair was very quick to confirm this call. And that's why. Good umpire. Mr. Badista Good has two challenges remaining. Please. Thank you.
Oh, it's another very special point from Andy Murray. Under the pump for so much of it. And conjuring up some magic to put an end to it. It's been that movement there up to the forehand that has just looked a little laboured at times, but... Particularly balanced at the end of it, but Murray will be delighted. It's another love hold. Five games old, four sets. To Ball have change, a break point in this fourth set. it as well and the frustrations he was there it wasn't about a lack of positioning let's for service the return and thus again you can sense his disappointment because the position he found himself in the rally was a good one couldn't capitalize useful not just the speed but look at the turn on the boards always moving away from Murray staying low on him sudden injection of pace he can produce off that wing Game and more of the same and it's been nowhere near as prolific in the ace race Bautista are good and by two sets six to one. five here in the fourth. And what an evening this has been in the Melbourne Arena here. Fabulous occasion. People, I'm sure, will leave with mixed emotions. Andy Murray's team out of their seats. Once more as he makes his way out beneath them. His wife, Kim. Hasn't made the trip over. Temporarily held up due to the uh, fireworks going off at the MCG. the right 
from where we are here. Murray serving once more to keep this match alive. Let for service. case. <laughs> A quite magnificent point once again. Giving his man the runaround. Going to miss too many of those from that position. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Great points now for Murray on serve. He's been untroubled of late. As we sit on the cusp of another breaker. It's fair to say that expectations for Andy Murray after all we saw on Friday were not what we have seen today. He has defied the odds. One big push here from him. Could see this match. Into an unlikely fifth set. Thank you. Bautista Ragut to start the breakup. up from the very start in the third set tie break and down a mini break quickly itself. Deafening noise as Andy Murray grabs the mini break One, here. Zero, Murray. And he is starting to dominate more and more of these exchanges. Those about once every three weeks. His favorite shot with plenty of space. Options at his disposal. And that's a bit of a gift. 
please. Interesting choice of return as well. You know that Bautista or Good isn't picking up the return when he starts to block them back into play. That's not really his style. Testament to the quality of the Murray serve at this stage of the match. Just couldn't make any inroads with the back end, the Spaniard. He was just a little tentative. Murray was the man to make the first move in the rally. the Spaniard's mind just somewhat scrambled at the moment. There was nothing on the slice. time and talk about he has been so clinical in the forecourt deep into this fourth set A brilliant atmosphere charge at 5-1 here. and making them believers. Incredibly, you, Murray men. has five set points to take this to a fifth. Shot though has put him in this position. Yeah. 
Thank you. If the subplot hadn't have been so momentous, you would have just focused purely on the quality of the tennis out here, and it has been exceptional. It truly has. Ladies and gentlemen, please turn your flash off. Thank you. Possible is looking distinctly possible here in Melbourne. Andy Murray has fought his way back from two sets to love down to level things up. We are heading to a fifth and final set. Well, this is mildly momentous, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, if there was ever a fitting tribute to a champion's farewell. I don't know whether it's a final goodbye. I don't know whether he's going to be here in two days and what sort of condition he will be in in two days, more importantly. But what a night, what a moment, what an atmosphere, what a competitor, and what an opponent. All the ingredients of a miracle in Melbourne. So set number five, Andy Murray to kick it off. a sizable miss having laid the foundations well that was a the first real indicator to be fair that he is tight because up till now it's been some wondrous play by murray to keep himself involved competitive and on level terms that was a big miss Is a little sign of how he's feeling emotionally. He's given nothing away in the three hours and 38 minutes, but be forgiven somewhat if he's feeling a little scrambled.
this point to open it. That was the perfect response from Murray, who was ahead at the start of the fifth. Well, if you're not in awe, you don't have a pulse. This is just off the charts in terms of being a competitor. To not get dispirited in that third set down a break, given everything that's gone on, and figure out a way to uh, make life as complicated and as difficult for Patisse Ragu as he's managed to do is just symbolic of everything that he uh, resembles. Just when you think you've seen it all, there's another chapter being written. jaw-dropping stuff. A man who could barely move. Summoning every last drop. Love 15. Mr. Murray fell into the call on the left far sideline. The ball was called out. Well, he's throwing this away because he wants to buy some time to compose himself. Such a big game from Love 30 up in this one for Murray that he's just missed a couple of shots he expected to make, and that was all about getting composed. He knew it wasn't going to be in. to stay composed right now is the Spaniard who is uh, under a tidal wave of pressure no doubt about it and he's just going to have a reel off three very important points So close, so tantalizingly close in that game. And we're asking ourselves how. I'm sure everyone else is asking themselves how. So uh, I can only imagine that the man in your picture right now is questioning how he's got himself in this situation. Certainly not all of his own doing, that's absolutely for certain.
trying to stay at the crossroads of the present as a tennis player in these sort of situations. It's not easy. You'd almost have to be unconscious not to allow your mind to wander to some degree to the past and the future. Oh, yes. I haven't seen that one of those for a while. It was a very clean hit. He's been so dominant behind his first deal, but it was a rare one against the card. Just played the drop shot enough that Batiste Ragu didn't take a step back, waiting for the big forehand there. He was already on his toes, bit of forward momentum. It was crucial because he didn't get there with a lot of time, but just enough. strongest shot has it is overhead but when he needed it the most there he was absolutely clinical flushed it out of the middle saves the first of the break points It's the first break since midway through set number three. Well, what a big one it could prove to be. Bautista Ragut strikes first in the fifth. 2-1 for the Spaniard. Do we, do we continue to dream? <laughs> that dates back to 2006, you Thank remember. You, I think it was his Davis Cup debut, was it against Israel? Does I remember rightly? Yeah. He played Andy Ram. Can you please take your seat? Back from Thank two you. sets to love down there was an early indicator of the metal and he had. bit of taste of his own medicine.
40 love. Dice on the return. And the Spaniard is ahead of the game. He's got a pressure him here as well, Nick, isn't he? He can uh, see that his opponent is now even more wounded than he was when he stepped onto court, understandably so, after this epic contest. Three hours, 52 minutes, and Petit Ragu isn't going to relax here. He's not going to get complacent. The one service break will get it done. Head speed. played a part or not. I don't think it did, but a decent chunk out of the return, didn't he? Doesn't holding back. Does it mean, is it just taking a little longer between first and second as well? I mean, it's so tough to be overly critical, isn't it? Because we've been talking about it the whole time, but it just seems to be a, taking a couple of extra seconds when he misses the first. Maybe just recovery-wise, like landing on his left leg again, just trying to get himself back to be able to push up and mm. give himself the best chance to hit a second serve. to get out to the right was just too much to ask. And if he loses this game, surely the score will be too much to ask. Break point for a double break. Not much of a celebration, a muted one from both the Spaniard and those inside the Melbourne Arena. But Roberta Bautista Agud has just taken a very big step towards winning this titanic battle. 4-1. Thank you. Bautista Agud. His man and his mercy here. 4-1. Class 
this pass. Desperate strikes from Murray. An urgency to end the point, very clear. Trying to push the boundaries. Gripping stuff. They are a minute shy. Now it's touching the four hour mark. very close to the surface. Thank you. Murray serving. 1-5. He's made it, and he's given Murray the run around. A drop shot that had a fair way to travel by taking it cross court. It was a brave move. Of 
course. And so key in Andy's developmental years. Judy, a coach back in Scotland when both Andy and Jamie were growing up, learning the game. She laid the foundations. Turn that just had a little too much heat to it. Norris' movement just a fraction slow. After four hours and four minutes, Batista are good as at match point. Ovation for this man. Thank you. He's barely standing himself. Batista oh, Ragut to serve for victory. And how well he has done. Early stages of this fifth set. Down love 30 on his own serve. Things slipping away. What must have been going through his mind? Mr. Mary challenged the call on the left center service line. The ball was called in. Thirty love. Mr. Mary has one challenge in him.
a truly Herculean effort from Andy Murray to keep this match alive. are good though with three match points please Roberto Bautista are good ends Andy Murray's Australian Open career. A colossal match that had everything. Everyone inside the Melbourne Arena is on their feet. This man, as always, left nothing on the table. In the end, it wasn't to be. A smile of pride. Time will tell whether we get to see a little more of one of the all-time greats. The Spaniard will be uh, speaking very shortly. Let's hear what he's got to say. Well, Roberto, congratulations through to the second round of the Australian Open. An interesting night for you. But firstly, some great form coming into the Australian Open. You won a tournament, a big win tonight. Is this some of the best tennis you've played in your career, do you think? Well, uh, today was an un incredible night, no? Uh, Andy deserved uh, this atmosphere. Andy deserved uh, all the people came to watch him. And I want to... Well, it was an uh, unbelievable match, uh, really good fight. He, he's a, a tough, tough fighter, tough opponent. He gave everything until the last point, and I want to congratulate him for all uh, he did for tennis. Well said. Now you've got John Millman, an Australian, in the next round, so the crowd weren't necessarily fully behind you tonight. <laughs> Next up, John Millman. You may have the crowd against you once more. You've beaten him three times out of three, though. What are your thoughts on playing John Millman in Australia? Well, the people here uh, love tennis. The people here is very polite. Very, It's nice to play uh, with this crowd. And, uh... I... I... I want to rest well, I want to enjoy the win I had today against Sandy, and we will see on Wednesday. Congratulations once again through to the second round. Roberto Batista Agu. Andy, no matter what the scoreboard says tonight, you won. If this was goodbye, it was the best goodbye you could give any of us. It reminded us of everything that you are. You are an inspiration. You are a champion. You have the heart of Australia, the size of Australia. We're going to miss you, but I'm sure you're going to miss this more. Uh, yeah, I mean, amazing. Uh... I, I'm actually, I'm actually, I think I'm going to be all right. Um, yeah, I mean, that was, it was incredible. Thank you so, so much to everyone that came out tonight. Um, Uh, 
Uh, I mean, I've, look, I've, I've honestly, I've loved playing here over the years. It's an amazing place to play tennis. Um, if this was my last match, like you say, amazing way to, to end. I gave literally everything I had. Um, it wasn't enough tonight, so congratulations to Roberto and his team. And yeah, I don't really have anything else to say, but just, yeah, thanks again. Thanks to everyone for all of the support. My team, my family who are here supporting me, and everyone who's contributed to my career over the years. This guy was actually my first coach when I came on tour. You've done very well. You know, considering, <laughs> it's impressive. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, look, um, I don't know, may maybe I'll see you again. Um, I'll, I'll do everything possible. <laughs> Yeah, I'll do everything possible to try. Um, I'll need to have, an, if, if I want to go again, I'll need to have like a big operation, which there's no guarantees I'll be able to come back from anyway. But, um, you know, I'll give it my best shot. And thank you. Thanks again. Cheers. Andy, we're obviously not sure if this is your final match or not, and the fans in here have obviously been paying tribute to you over the last four hours or so, but there are some other players and some of your greatest rivals that also wanted to pay tribute to their time with you on the court. Hey, Andy. Hi, Andy. Hey, Andy, my friend. I mean, what can I say? Yeah, where to start? Hey, Andy, it's your pal John here. Just want to say congratulations on a fantastic career. It was uh, definitely great through the years uh, to share the court with you, to uh, watch you play. You know, I just want to say that I'm very thankful to, to have shared a friendship with you on the tour. You know, I don't want to touch base too much on your tennis. We all know that you're an absolute legend of the sport and you always will be. It's very sad that uh, you, have to take to, you have to take that decision. Uh, but sometimes uh, life is not perfect, no? I just want to. To, to say thanks for all the things that you give to, to our sport. I think you were one of the best players, and of course, you were supporting women's, which was, I think, uh, for me, the best. Amazing career. Congratulations, buddy. You've done Scotland proud, um, Britain proud. You're a sir who can say that, uh, hardly anybody, uh, but you did it uh, as a tennis player. We had a, quite a journey, um, both of us. We got to play against each other, I think, when we were 12 years old in a small place in France. You uh, kicked my butt pretty badly at that time, and uh, who knew that at that time we were going to have an amazing career. I'm really going to miss you on tour, not only as a player, but most importantly as a person. You're always so fun to be around, and you always have the best jokes. I don't want that to get to your head. You've done so much for the sport. You've done so much for us as players, and um, we really can't thank you enough. Thank you for always uh, leaving your heart and every last drop of energy on the court and being a true example and inspiring uh, younger generations to, uh, to play the tennis the way you played it. I uh, just want to wish you all the best, uh, all the luck in this world, and uh, hope that you are uh, going to get better. Judy Ray is such a fine young gentleman, or young lad, and I wish you the best in everything in your future. We will miss you so much. You only have friends in the locker room, and you should be very proud of that fact as well. Yeah, if you're ever looking for a coaching job, you know, um, there's uh, one available together with my dad. Look, man, you had a Hall of Fame career. Enjoy your retirement. But just know I'm your biggest fan. Take care, buddy. Thank you, my friend. All the best. so many honors in the game, so many trophies, but arguably to be respected by your rivals and your peers in that manner, maybe the greatest tribute that anyone can give you. 
Yeah, look, I mean, I've, um, you know, I've been very fortunate in many ways to, and unlucky, I guess, to compete in an era with some of the, the guys that have been around. Um, Roger, Rafa, Novak have been, you know, incredibly difficult opponents, but um, I have a lot of respect for them. We've had some incredible matches, great battles that I think, you know, tennis fans all around the world will remember when, uh, when we all finish. And, um, yeah. To have obviously the respect of your peers is the most important thing, and it was very nice that they took the time to to do that for me. You you've earned it. You've earned it every step of the way. Tonight was another shining example of everything that you're about: your substance, your champion champion qualities. It's been an absolute privilege and a joy to watch you compete over the years, all over the globe. We wish you well with whatever's coming your way, Andy. Thank you for the memories. Thanks. Appreciate. It. Thank you. Here are the numbers. So much more than just figures, isn't it? And in terms of the first set percentage for Bautista, a good, generally pretty high today, was exceptional. A critical second game of the fifth set, so important that he was able just to hold his nerve when he looked as though he might be wobbling. And Andy Murray's come back in sets three and four. Sensational.